Yes, how's everybody doing today? I want you to know this is a good day. This is really a good day that God has set aside to allow us to live and see another day. It's even going to be a good day, even the day that we might leave it, because we know where we're going. We're going to spend eternity with God and Jesus, understand? So that's a blessing. Today I'm going to have a message for you that I believe that you will like, that I believe that will instruct you and help you in your life so that you can grow in your life, in your spiritual world, in your life with Jesus Christ, in your life with the Heavenly Father, so that you can be all that God wants you to be. See, the life that I now live, I live on to Christ. And when I'm living it on to Christ, that means I'm doing God's will. And that means I'm living by the Spirit. That means I'm going to let the Spirit lead me guide me and direct me through his word. And that's the same message that I want to give you today so that you can work on your transformation by the renewing of your mind. You understand? By the renewing of your mind so you can put them old things away and start living in the flesh. I mean, start living in the spirit instead of in the flesh. So you have to understand that the, that a spiritual mind is godly and the flesh mind is sinful. The spiritual mind is godly and the flesh mind is sinful. Understand that. And we are not ones that lives in sin. We are not one that goes out to practice sin. We are one that go out to practice living in the spirit of God, living through the word of God, which is spirit. We are the one that practice living in righteousness and goodness because we was created for good works. And we are supposed to be the light to the world. That means we're supposed to be good and darkness represent evil. And we are not supposed to be evil. You understand? We are supposed to be right. In order to be right, you got to understand, you got to have a spiritual mind that comes from God through his son, Jesus Christ. So today I, I got a message for you or a lesson for you, whichever way that it come out, that I think is really going to be a blessing for you that I really believe will help you in your, in your spiritual life so that you can grow and be all that God wants you to be, so that you can be regenerated, so that you can really be be a new creation through Christ Jesus by the word of God. And it starts off, with, my title is The Spiritual Mind Versus the Flesh Mind. The Spiritual Mind Versus the Flesh Mind. See, that's what he came to say is our spirit. And you have to really understand that the mind is spirit. That the mind is spirit. That the mind is spirit. And when you understand that the mind is spirit and the brain is physical. So, I want you to understand that your mind is spirit. It's the part of you that you can't see but have control of your physical body. So whatever in your spirit is going to come out. So if you got sin in your spirit, then you're going to be sinful. But if you got God in your spirit by the Holy Spirit living in you, then you're going to be spiritual and you're going to be righteous and you're going to be good. See, you got to understand that spiritual mind seeks the things of God. That's what you got to understand. The spiritual mind seeks the things of God. Let's go to Colossians 3, 1 and 2. Colossians 3, 1 and 2. Colossians 3, 1 and 2. These are verses here. I want you to be familiar with. It said, If ye then be read if you then be re be risen, be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ said it on the right hand of God. He's saying what? Well, seek those things are which are above. He's saying, seek them things that are spiritual. Seek them things that are righteous. So otherwise he's saying, work on your spiritual mind. So let your mind receive the things that's from heaven. Let your mind receive the things that come from God. Which, which, which Christ said on the right hand of God. 
set your affections on things above. When he says set your affections on things above, he's really saying set your mind, set your heart on things above. On things above, not on things on the earth. Not on things on the earth. So don't go around trying to do all these different early things like lying, cheating, stealing, don't do this or don't do that. But set your mind on Jesus Christ. Set your mind on God. Set your mind on the Holy Spirit and let them work in your life. You have a relationship with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's how you set your mind on things above. Because God is above. Jesus is above. So you got to set your mind on things above. And Jesus and God want us to live in righteousness and goodness. After all, Jesus is our righteousness. So we should be shaping into the righteousness that he want to be. Jesus is our redeemer. So we've been redeemed. We've been forgiven of sins. Why can we not seek them things that are above? Because when we seek them things that are above, that will keep us from living in our flesh. That would keep us from living in our flesh. And when you have the word flesh, as I said to you earlier, it's got to deal with sin. So otherwise, that will keep you from living in your sin. If you seek them things of above. So you should have a mindset to seek them things of above. And that is a spiritual mindset that you should have to seek those things that are above. But then I got another thing here. Then the flesh mind... You have to understand the flesh mind seeks the things that goes against God. The flesh mind seeks those things that goes against God. Plus the flesh mind cannot please God. So if you want to please God, first of all, you need to understand that your flesh mind cannot please God, which is your sinful mind that cannot please God. Your flesh mind, not, your flesh mind cannot please God. And you have to understand that your flesh mind, which is your sinful mind, go against God. If you want to honor God, then you can't live out your flesh mind. If you want to honor God, then you can't live out your sinful mind. That means you got to live out the mind of Christ. That means you got to receive the mind that God want you to have by renewing your mind, you understand, so that you can live with God and so that you can please God. So when you learn to live to please God, that's when you will find your life getting better. When you learn to live to please God, that's when you see your life getting better. You see your thinking getting better. You see your perceptions, everything about you just start getting better. Because when your mind is right, your deeds become right. And your deeds become right, that means your life become right. And when all of that really take place, you understand that you can talk about some type of prosperity taking in your life because of your spiritual prosperity. It take your spiritual prosperity in order to make your physical prosperity good and make it right. You understand? One day you might have been filled with depression, you understand? But you start seeking them things above and you start doing the will of God. And then that depression just left you because you learned to rejoice while you're going through your tribulation. That's what you call a form of spiritual prosperity and because of that now you got peace of mind because of that you're not frustrated you're not upset you understand you can think better you can deal with people better you can handle life better that's a blessing you understand and because of that now you can make the right decisions for your life uh, if you got children you can make the right decisions for your children when you destroy that jealousy in your life which which that jealousy is like sin and that sin can destroy you that greed for sin and that can destroy you and that greed is your simple nature that greed is your flesh trying to overpower you and destroy you but the bible tell us you understand you that have a spiritual mind you got to be content with what you have and he said be content 
Be content. Learn to be content with what you got. And then from your contentment, you can grow on that because God will establish you if you just trust him. But that can only happen through the spiritual mind because when your your sinful mind or your flesh mind step in, it does a lot of crazy things that will mess you up. So you have to de you have to understand some of the desires of the sinful mind or some of the desires of the flesh mind. You have to understand the flesh mind wanna cheat. The flesh mind wanna steal. The flesh mind wanna hate. The flesh mind wanna be dishonest. Do you understand that? And we can't be that. Not if you spiritual minded, you can't be like that, because a flesh mind. See, the flesh mind, you have to understand, is for a, a lot of evil and destruction. It's not for the good. It's not for the good. See, that flesh mind that you get and that simple mind that you live by, which is your flesh mind, a lot of times it gets you in trouble. Some people end up in the penitentiary because of a flesh mind. Some people end up breaking up their marriage just because of a flesh mind. Some people, kids and stuff, runs away from them because of the flesh mind. Because when you're working out the flesh, sometimes you just can't show them love. I'm not talking about telling them love. I'm not talking about because you buy them a lot of things. Now, that's not love. They can sense the love that come out of you for them because you're living out of love that comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. But in order for that, in order for that to work, you got to have a spiritual mind. Uh, you want to be delivered from drunkenness, which is the flesh mind. You understand it's the sinful mind, and you find it taking over you and empowering you. Well, I'm gonna tell you, it's only one way you're gonna get over it. You got to put on the spiritual mind, uh, and when you put on that spiritual mind, then you will start learning to live and please God. And when you learn to live and please God, then you will start learning how to live and please yourself. And when you learn to live and please God, then you will learn how to live and please others. But in order for it to work, you got to understand one thing. You got to have that spiritual mind not that flesh mind, because you got to understand the flesh mind goes around and like to meditate on evil. And when it meditate on evil, it's thinking about how to do evil, not how to do good. It's thinking about how to do destructive. It's thinking about how to be wicked. It's thinking about how to be a kind artist. It's thinking about how to be dirty. It's thinking about how to break the laws of the land. It's thinking about how to break God's law. It's thinking about everything negative that can destroy you or that can hurt you. You understand? Uh, but that's when you're working out of that simple mind. Uh, that's when you're working out of that flesh mind. But I'm here to tell you today, you don't have to be like that. You don't have to be stuck like that. Once you get into this spiritual mind, you understand? Uh, that comes through Christ Jesus so that you can do what's right, so that you can do what's outstanding, so that you can live a life that's pleasing to God, so your life can prosper. And so you your life can prosper. It will prosper in different areas. You understand? If you if you if you're not used to having a peace of mind, you understand? And you want a peace of mind? I'm gonna tell you right now. You can get it through the spiritual mind. But as long as you let that flesh mind keep working in your life, I'm here to tell you. You're gonna stay frustrated. You're gonna stay miserable. You're gonna stay upset. Because when you're working out that flesh mind. And you got to understand, it makes you want to get angry real fast. And a lot of times when you get angry, you can do something stupid. You can do something to hurt yourself as well as hurt others. See, because when anger takes control of you, all type of evil going to come out of you. I don't know if it's going to be a violent evil, if it's going to be coming out of your mouth. But the only thing I know for sure, when you let anger into your life, which is your flesh mind, take over, then you're going to find yourself getting this done. But when you let that spiritual mind, you understand, uh, that comes from Jesus Jesus. And he said, get angry. You understand me? He said, get angry, but sin not. That's what he said. He said, get angry, but sin not. So you understand, uh, you might get angry, but don't do nothing evil. 
because he's telling you when you do something evil, you're living out of your flesh mind. But he's saying don't live out your flesh mind. Continue to live out more spiritual mind. And he said don't go to sleep on your anger. He said don't let the sun go down on your anger. So he's telling you right there. You understand that. He's telling you. and So he's telling you your flesh mind is going to hold grudges. Your flesh mind is going to keep anger. But you got to understand something about this spirit your mind. See, the spiritual mind is going to call upon Jesus. The spiritual mind is going to call upon God. And the spiritual mind is going to release that anger and start to hold on to that anger. The spiritual mind is going to be forgiving. The spiritual mind is going to be gentle. The spiritual mind is going to be kind. And it's going to release it and you're going to find yourself, you understand, having a peace of mind. You're going to find yourself doing something good and of something evil. See, the spiritual mind versus the flesh mind. I would advise you always, you understand, this is my advice to you, to let the Spirit of God work in your life so that you can develop the spiritual mind that'll keep you out of trouble, but it'll keep you growing in your life. Because you can continue to grow in your life as long as you let the spirit mind continue to work in your life. Unless you let the spiritual mind continue to work in your life. Because, you know, if you continue to let that evil mind or that sinful mind or that flesh mind continue to work you, you're going to continue to do evil deeds. And you're going to continue to find yourself going backwards in some area of your life that you don't necessarily want to go backwards. See, just because you got a flesh mind don't mean you're going to be monetary broke. But you can be broke in different areas of your life, which are spiritual. You may have physical blessings, but you may not have no spiritual blessings. And the spiritual blessings is what makes life better so that you can have a physical blessing that goes along with your spiritual blessing and you can really enjoy it and have a peace of mind. Uh, you ain't got to worry about nobody taking it from you and all that crazy stuff that y'all go through. You don't have to worry about that stuff, you understand? Because you know that you are covered and you know that God is going to take care of you. So you got to have the spiritual mind work in your life. Then it says, and you know, this is a very true thing that you have to understand this right here. If you meditate on evil, so you know, so if you meditate on evil, that's the flesh mind. So if you meditate on evil, you have given the flesh mind control over your heart. Understand it. You have given the flesh mind control over your heart. Or you have given the sinful mind control over your heart. So you ask me. <laughs> so you ask me. How do I not let my flesh mind or my sinful mind control me? Don't meditate on evil. Meditate on righteousness. Meditate on God. Meditate on Jesus. Meditate on God's word. And when you meditate on it, that means it gets deep down inside of you. That means it gets in your heart. That means you become conscious of it. And then that means you will start doing what the word said. And the, the evil part or the sinful part or the flesh part will start dying off. It will start dying off and you're becoming new. You're becoming new. And the people are going to see the goodness in you. And they're going to like you for your goodness. They're going to like you because you're different. See, that's what, that's what a lot of people understand. They're going to like you because you're different than them. Because they see so many Christian, that's the same as them, that they don't see no reason why to come and get this, what God got to give them. They see Christians with their lives all messed up, and they don't understand why, and they call themselves a Christian, and they're supposed to be good, and some of them Christians that call themselves Christians got the worst attitudes in the world, and then, and, and then that don't make nobody want to come to Christ, that make everybody want to run from Christ, because you are not the light of the world, you are just like the darkness in the world. It's bad when somebody say they cannot trust a Christian because the Christian is being stumped on. 
because Christians are being abused because they, they're they not walking in the spiritual mind or the ones that's doing this don't understand it and they fake it. But you got to understand this. If you get the spiritual mind that I'm talking about and you really want to do the will of God, you got to let this spiritual mind that comes through the word of God work in your life. Your new mindset should be spiritual. It should be righteousness. It should be goodness. You understand? It should be love. It should be mercy. It should be forgiving. It should be glorifying. It should be full of jealousy. It should be full of envy. It should be full of hatred. It should be full of love because you got the spiritual mind working in your life now. And I hope you, and I hope that you're getting what I'm saying. So don't meditate on evil because you don't want evil to control you so let's meditate on godliness let's meditate on righteousness so that they can control you so that it can get deep in your heart and you will have a mindset understand me and you will have a mindset that is spiritual and you can stand up and give God some praise and you can give God some glory and you can say thank you Jesus for all that you've done because if it went for you this grace that's upon me I wouldn't have but because of you Jesus I got this grace because of you, Jesus, I got this super new this supernatural influence that comes from you and God. Because of you, Jesus, I can get revelations on different things of my life now. Because of you, Jesus, I can discern things better now. Do you know why? Because now you got a spiritual mind that came through Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit that now that dwells in you. And you have to understand that you are blessed beyond measures. So don't meditate on evil. Meditate on God. Then it said, if you have a spiritual mind, your desires will be to love God and Jesus, to love others, to be respectful, kind, and honest, to do the will of God. To do the will of God. To do the will of God. And when you're doing the will of God, all the other things that I spoke on, that's what happens when you do the will of God. When you do the will of God. I'm going to pick it up. I'm not trying not to be too long today. But your everyday life will prosper in all areas. When you are actually doing the will of God, I don't care what nobody say, there's going to be some prosperity in your life every day. I didn't say monetary prosperity, first of all. But there's going to be some type of prosperity in your life every day. Because when God is leading you and guiding you, you don't just look for monetary prosperity. You look for spiritual prosperity that's taking place inside of you that helps you make the right decision. That kept you from letting your anger come in and control you. To see that you got self-control. To know that you can walk around with joy. And knowing that you got peace in your life. The things that used to make you're frustrated. You can walk away from it now. That's called spiritual prosperity. And the reason why you got that spiritual prosperity, because you got a spiritual mindset. And a spiritual mindset deal with godliness. And the spiritual mindset deal with godliness. So you got to understand you have a spiritual mindset. Ain't God good? Because you couldn't have that spiritual mindset if it wasn't for God. If it wasn't for God. But by living out God's word in the New Testament, see, by living out God's word, I got to, I got to emphasize this because we're living under grace. So you got to understand that we're living under this new covenant, this New Testament, which is which is known as the new covenant that people didn't seem to let us know for years, which is a new covenant that is God's new agreement, which is God's new agreement with promises. With God, new agreements, with promises. So in order for this to work, you got to understand a covenant. A covenant means to come into agreement with God. Thank you, Jesus. See, that's what a lot of people don't understand. If you're going to be a believer in Jesus Christ, if you're going to believe in Jesus Christ, you got to come into agreement with Jesus Christ. If you're going to believe in God and receive God and be faithful, you got to come into agreement with them. That means you got to agree 
with what the word of God say in that new covenant. It said, don't steal, don't steal. It say, don't lie, don't lie. It say, don't cheat, don't cheat. It say, don't steal, don't steal. It say, don't fornicate, don't fornicate. It said, don't commit adultery. It said, don't be a drunkard. Don't. He said, don't have a bunch of evil desires. Don't, 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 don't always think about how to do all these sexual things that's not for God to fornicate and all that stuff and commit adultery. See, if, yeah, if that's what you doing, you have to work. You you have to understand that you're working out of your sinful mind and not your spiritual mind, and you wonder why your life is not getting right because you haven't became into agreement with the covenant of the New Testament. Understand me. You got to get in agreement in order for it to work. In order for it to work, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added on to you. You will find that verse in Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, 33. That's where you will find that verse. So, I want you to know today, work on your spiritual mindset. Work on your spiritual mindset. That means meditate on God. Meditate on Jesus. Meditate on the Word of God and use them in your life. Uh, and when you see a blessing, say, thank you, Jesus. You might even say, thank you, God. Uh, I even say, thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, and I say, God, I thank you for your words because I almost did something, but I didn't do it because your word is uh, active and alive in my life and my spirit. And it comes to my mind because I I got a spiritual mindset by serving you, God. I got a spiritual mindset by honoring you, God. I got a spiritual mindset by seeking you, God. I got a spiritual mindset by trusting you, God. I got a spiritual mindset by having confidence in you, God. And as I grow in my spiritual mindset, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good, and I want you to know one thing, that you can be good, that you can be good, that you be good, but you got to get this spiritual mindset that I'm talking about that comes through Jesus Christ. So I'm here to tell you today, if you don't know Jesus, today is a good day to, to know Jesus. If you really want to be saved, you got to believe in Jesus. You got to have faith in Jesus. The long prayers ain't going to save you. Your faith will, your trust will, your confidence will. That's how you get delivered in Jesus. That's how you get delivered in Jesus, by faith. It works by faith. And that, we, you know, we, we a lot of times they got you thinking that you got to get down on your knees and pray for 20 and 30 and 40 hours, you understand, try to get saved. You got to sit down there, you got to say, you got to say, thank you, Jesus, a thousand times before you can get saved. Uh, but the Bible says all you got to do is believe in Jesus and you shall be saved. That's what it said. I'm going I'm to I'm use this verse to give you an idea on how to get saved. For you that's not saved and understand this, it's, it's for you today. That if it said that if thou, that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. You got to believe this and you got to receive it. And he said, You shall be saved. For with the heart, man believe unto righteousness. But see, with the heart, you got to understand you believe unto righteousness. That's where your repenting is. Believing unto righteousness. That means you don't, you're not going to believe in your sinful mind no more. You're going to believe in this new mind that comes to Jesus Christ, which is your spiritual mind, which is going to give you a spiritual mindset and take away the flesh mindset. But you got to believe in the unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And all you got to do is confess and admit and say, I'm saved. Thank you, Jesus. I'm saved. Thank you, Jesus. I've been delivered. 
Thank you, Jesus. I've been delivered. My body of sin don't have no more power on me because I've been delivered by Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And all I can say is I hope this message bless you. I hope to touch you. And may God continue to bless you and lead you. As you know, I'm on YouTube under Thomas Patterson. Feel free to go to my channel. You know, I also tweet, so go to Twitter and check me out. And may God bless you. I want you to know that God loves you. Jesus loves you. And I want you to know that I love you. And I will continue to bring these words to you, hoping that it encourages you and help you to continue to live on to God and be the best that you can be in this world. So whatever you do, do it as on do it wholeheartedly. I understand. Do it wholeheartedly as unto the Lord. And may God bless you. And hope to see you next week.